Hello. So, um, once you've done rainforest, another um, case study in this case is uh, extreme environment. So you can either do hot or cold. I'll do a video on both. Um, but currently in red and green, we learn about hot deserts. Okay. Hot deserts, you need to know, um, they are not the biggest desert in the world. The two biggest deserts are actually cold. Um, the Sahara Desert is the biggest hot desert in the world. You, get, you can get temperatures up to 57, 58 degrees Celsius in a day, but it freezes at night because there is no cloud cover, and so all the heat escapes. Um, you get less than 200 millimeters of rain per year, 200, 150 to be a desert. Uh, unpredictable precipitation patterns, if at all, and you've got obviously a shortage of water, therefore vegetation makes um, reduces the fertility of the soil and increases the risk of erosion. Okay, so deserts actually grow very quickly, hot deserts, because sand gets blown around very easily. Plants have had to adapt to that. The acacia tree has, uh, has short and fat trunks that acts as a reservoir, stores water. It's fire resistant, not fire proof, so it can be uh, killed in fire, but it's resistant. Roots are up to 50 meters long, so it can catch water. The Joshua tree is another great example, okay? Cacti or cactus is a good example. Animal adaptation, you've got desert fox, thick fur on the sole of their feet to protect them from the hot ground. You've got light colored fur to reflect the sunlight. This one there has massive ears so they can actually um, it can actually uh, cool itself down uh, really quickly. Okay, you've, you you might have learned about beetles or snakes that are um, exothermic, so they've got cold blood and it, they get heated by the sunshine outside, etc. Okay, opportunities of life in a hot desert. We stood in this case here. Our case today at Red and Green is Western Desert in the West, uh, Western United States. One of them is farming. Ironically, despite the extreme weather, high temperatures and sunlight do favor agriculture. So if um, if irrigation is possible and you can divert water, you can grow crops incredibly well. Tourism, okay, national parks attracts, the national park of the Western Desert attracts 2 million visitors per year in the Grand Canyon, for example. Las Vegas itself as a city in the desert attracts 37 million people a year in the um, in the city, okay? So that's the AO1, your AO2's impacts it has, positive impacts it has, and um, AO3 are the challenges that may cause, okay? Energy-wise, well, obviously, solar power. In the Western Desert, we've got uh, 100,000 homes that are powered by um, uh, by solar energy. Um, we've got 360, provides about 360 work, uh, jobs. Uh, hydroelectric power, you've got a picture here of the famous Hoover Dam. Um, it's, it stores water, it provides electricity, but you also happen to have some oil in the deserts, okay? So that provides about $50 million um, of income for states in the United States that cover the Western Desert, okay? You also have mining, copper, zinc, uranium, uh, coal for energy. All that provides valuable resources and re gives people reasons to move to an area that is otherwise hostile and extreme. That being said, it is an area that's hostile and extreme, and some of the biggest challenges are water. Okay, rising temperatures mean there's evaporation, high evaporation. Dams use a lot more water. Okay, they use the store water, but there's so much surface that surface evaporates really, really quickly. Okay, we also uh, they also use uh, so the Hoover Dam. You can see it in that picture actually. That white line is the area where the water line used to be. It's now much lower than it used to be because they were actually Las Vegas pumping more water out of it, and it's that's allowing um, rivers to bring in. So there's basically a water uh, a deficit in this area. Okay, accessibility. Well, you've got a picture here of one lo lo one road in um, in the um, Australian bush. Um, it's but you've got one person per square mile. Increases vulnerability when traveling. There's only one main major to way between Las Vegas and Los Angeles. Uh, it's hard to get to. You can get to an airplane, um, use airport, but it's really tricky to get into the uh, desert. Therefore, it's really hard to provide services like um, water, electricity, uh, bin uh, recycling, etc. Okay, population growth double national average means there's a risk of water insecurity. Las Vegas is the best example of that. So many people using a ridiculous amount of water in a completely unsustainable way um, means that it, for now it's okay, but they are eventually going to run out. And the obvious one. 50 degrees Celsius in July. Temperatures are extortionately high. Climate change is only going to make that worse. There's only going to be more evaporation, less water. And it makes just any manual work and manual labor in that, um, or any job in these environments, extremely, extremely taxing on the human body. Okay. Um, so the biggest issues with the, uh, with hot deserts is desertification. Okay. Desertification is the growth of these hot deserts. It's caused by overcultivation, overgrazing, population growth, and removing wood. Okay. You've got the bit of explanation here, but all these are A1 actually your explanation is the impact it has and there's ways to deal with that okay one way in which you can fight desertification is to afforest the famous great green wall of africa being uh, uh, being grown in the sahel from singapore to djibouti uh you've got um, plant trees stabilize the soil that allow water to be stored you can use appropriate technology rather than hose piping fields you can use drip irrigation you can also harvest water okay you can use magic stone collect water in dams reservoirs etc okay but that is everything you need to know for your hot desert case study